Our next topic is abscesses. Abscesses are extremely common in rabbits. So what actually is an abscess? Well, it's an infection most commonly caused by some sort of bacteria um, that results in the accumulation of lots of inflammatory cells. And it causes a lot of debris and necrotic material to kind of accumulate in, a, in an area. This little rabbit down here has a nice big abscess on the side of its jaw. We did talk a little bit last time during the dental lecture about jaw abscesses. So we did go over some of this a little bit. But with abscesses, there's not really one particular kind of bacteria. There are so many bacteria out there that can cause abscess problems. The most classical one that we think about with abscesses in rabbits is going to be Pasteurella. That's the one that um, is really well known to cause abscesses in rabbits, but Abscesses can happen from a variety of different microorganisms. I put up a list of different organisms that we will see on a more frequent basis. Of course, Pasteurella is up there, but E. coniculi, Staphylococcus, including MRSA, the methicillin-resistant Staph aureus, Moraxella, Acinetobacter, tons of other bacteria can really be in those abscesses causing problems. Abscesses can be located anywhere. So common areas that we will see abscesses in rabbits. Tooth roots, for example, this rabbit here has an abscess on the side of its face that's associated with a tooth root. Postorbital, so that means it's behind the eye. Those are often associated with tooth roots as well. This is a picture down here of a rabbit that was having surgery for an abscess behind its eye. That white stuff right there, that's pus. And so the eye is actually bulging out because of all this pus that's sitting right behind it and pushing it out. Skin abscesses, so little abscesses just at different locations on the skin. I've seen that happen from rabbits that like got into a fight or something like that. And joints are another common location where we will see abscesses. Less common locations, but of course abscesses happen anywhere. In the lungs, for example, in this particular rabbit here, this is the chest of a rabbit. There really should be, you'll notice there's like a lot of black back here. There should be a lot of black within that chest because, again, as we were talking about x-rays earlier, anything that's black on an x-ray really is gas. And so in the lungs, you should see a lot of gas, so you should see a lot of black. And in this particular x-ray, we're seeing a lot of white. So that's an abscess in that particular rabbit that was accumulating um, within the chest. And then the gastrointestinal tract is another common or less common location, but certainly one where we have seen them before. This is an example of a rabbit that has an abscess actually at the base of the ear. What's happened in this picture is the fur is shaved from the side of the ear, and you can actually kind of see a little swelling on the side of the ear where the um, abscess is. So the signs that a rabbit has an abscess really depends on where it's located. It may be extremely obvious in that you see just this swelling somewhere, like a couple of those pictures is big, huge swelling. Um, it may, if it has it in the joints, it may act kind of sore when it's hopping around, or if in a particular location when it's touched, it's sore, it may have an abscess in that kind of area. Um, but then the, some of the signs really may be related to what is going on where that abscess is. So, for example, when we were showing the pictures of the abscess in the chest, um, the rabbit may present with some difficulty breathing. If it has an abscess in the gastrointestinal tract, it may present with some signs of stasis. So it's kind of variable. So the diagnosis, how we go about figuring out if we have an abscess, is if we see a object that is swollen or what have you, we can put a little needle into the area and kind of suck some of that content out. And so what that's called is a fine needle aspirate. So if you stick a needle in, you suck some content out, and you have pus in the syringe, that's an abscess. And so uh, it can be very easy in those particular circumstances. When we have those less common locations, like within the chest or in the gastrointestinal tract, those are a little bit more difficult to identify. Those are going to involve quite a bit more diagnostic tests uh, or more um, 
involve diagnostic tests. So x-rays, ultrasounds, those sort of things. When we do have a sample of pus, we do like to do a culture and sensitivity. So the culture identifies what the bacteria is. The sensitivity identifies which antibiotics are appropriate for it. Because in this day and age, we're encountering a lot more antibiotic resistance in humans and in our pets. And so if we have a bacterial organism present, and we know we need to be putting this individual animal on some antibiotics, it's really good to know which antibiotics are going to work so you don't waste time for that particular individual um, by potentially putting on an inappropriate antibiotic. So treatment, of course, antibiotics based upon the sensitivity testing. And then sometimes we need to actually surgically remove um, or clean out an abscess. It all depends on the location of that particular abscess.